Hi and welcome to a new Intagma tutorial. This is Manuel and today I want to talk about something different, because as you can clearly see, this is not Houdini, instead it is Blender. Blender, you ask? That is not a procedural program. And you are right. Blender used to be a destructive program. But since the latest official version, 2.92, they added a procedural feature to Blender called Geometry Nodes. And this allows you to alter the geometry data of Blender objects in a procedural way, very much like SOPS does. Of course, in its current state it's not very capable, but the foundations are there and I found it to be interesting enough to have a closer look. So join me on the other side of the fence while I recreate this little project in Blender using geometry nodes and render it with Eevee. But before we can start, we need the software. Even if you have Blender installed already, chances are that you do not have the right version. Although you can find geometry nodes as an official part of 2.92, the latest nodes are only in the very latest alpha version of 2.93. Geometry Nodes is under active development and nodes are added all the time. So let's go to blender.org and then to download and then scroll all the way down until it tells you to go experimental. Let's do that. And here you find the Blender 2.93 alpha version. Please download that one. It comes with a zip file. Just unzip it and you can use Blender directly from the folder you create. So now that we are inside of Blender, let's first delete the default cube and then by pressing Shift A over the viewport, let's create a grid. Go down to the undo panel and up the resolution to 100 by 100. Let's quickly check on the resolution by turning on wireframe temporarily. Yes, that is a lot of points. Turn off wireframe. To use geometry nodes, let's create a new pane. Switch it over to geometry nodes editor. The node network is empty. To change that, press the new button and it creates a geometry nodes network for you. Rename this to distance fx. Inside of this network you have two nodes, the input and the output. The input pipes in all the geometry of the object. Note that Blender allows you to alter the geometry destructively in the viewport using the tool. The green geometry port bits out the geometry information. So this is a data structure holding all the information about the points, vertices, primitives and so on, and about the attributes. And Blender has inbuilt attributes with defined names like position, scale and rotation, and arbitrary attributes that can be defined by you, just like Houdini. The output port is the counterpart of the view flag in Houdini. So whatever you connect here gets displayed in the viewport and gets written to the polygonal description of the object. So if you want to do something now, let's create a new node by pressing Shift A and then search for transform. That gives you this transform node, drop it on top of this wire and it gets connected. And now you can move your geometry in X by dragging this slider here. What Blender does under the hood is it changes the position attribute of the geometry. To show you this, we can mimic the transform node with math nodes. So let's just create an attribute vector math node. Let's connect it to the geometry and then the output to this geometry. Now this vector math node has an operation add, that is what we want to do. And down here it has three string fields, A, B and result. A and B are the inputs. Blender asks you to specify an attribute that this node will use as an input by name. And then you have to come up with a third attribute to hold the result. So for example, I can use position as an input, then switch B to be a vector field, then write all the results of this operation to position again. And if I now add to the position, I get exactly the same effect as with the transform node. So that is the principle of geometry nodes attribute workflow. Unlike Houdini, the nodes are not an integral part of the objects in Blender because it used to be a destructive program. Instead, they are attached to the objects through a modifier. If you switch to the modifier tab here in the properties editor, you see a modifier got added automatically when we press this new button up here. And this modifier is called geometry nodes and it is in charge of applying all the changes of the geometry node network to the data of the object. Down here you have a link field and this link field shows distance fx and that is the name of our node tree. The node tree lives independently of the object and can be linked here. It can be used on multiple objects. Now with that out of the way, let's start with our little project. To start, let's do away with these two nodes and connect the geometry input to the output. 
Now let's bring in the Antagma logo. I prepared it as a scalable vector graphics here in this folder. It's called Antagma NSVG, so import it. You don't see much and that is because it is tiny, but you can select it here from the outliner and then hover over the viewport and press the period key on the numpad and it will zoom to the extent of this object. Before we scale it up, let's first center the pivot by going to Object, Set Origin and then Origin to Geometry. Let's move the pivot in the middle of this object, this little orange dot here. Zoom out and now you can press S over the viewport and scale the object up. It is a little bit off-center, so press N to view the transform panel and then center it by resetting the location to zero. Now let's move it up a little bit just by pressing G for grab and then Z to constrain it to the Z axis. Now I scaled this in object mode and that is not necessarily a good idea. Let us have a look at the transform panel again. It's telling me that the scale is uh, 158 something. I want to have this reset to 1. Instead I want to move all the transformations of the points to the points themselves. And I can do that by going to object and then apply apply scale. And now it resets the matrix to be 1 but keeps the transformations by altering the point positions. Let's bring in the logo to our geometry nodes network. But before we can do that, we first have to convert it to a polygonal object. At the moment it is a Bezier curve. And Bezier curves do not work that well for that effect. Select it and go to object and then convert mesh. It's still called curve, but that's only the name. The icon changed to this little triangle indicating that this is a polygon object. Select the grid again and let's create a input object info node. Down here we have an object port. Select from the menu it presents our object called curve. By the way, rename this to n tagma n. Now the geometry of this n is coming out of this geometry port. And now I want to run a proximity query. So I want to write the distance of all these points of the grid to the closest point on the n to the points. Let's create an attribute proximity node. This presents you with two input ports, geometry and target. That's straightforward to connect. So geometry to geometry and the geometry of our entagma N to target. Now we have again two output attribute fields, distance and position. Distance is a float, position is a vector. At the moment you cannot distinguish between them in the interface. We want to use distance and call it dist. By just typing it here and pressing return you create this new attribute. And now if you connect this geometry to the output, the distance attribute is now present on the geometry. It would be nice to see it, but unfortunately in Blender there is no way of visualizing your attributes. But of course we can abuse vertex color for it. So let's create an attribute color ramp, because this node outputs color. Let's connect it to the geometry stream, like so. Use distance to be the attribute that we want to remap, and the result should be col. And col is a special attribute. The vertex color normally is called col in Blender. This is not a normal attribute. Instead it is an attribute that will bind automatically to the vertex color data of the object. Let me show you. If you switch down here to the object data properties, you see all the data associated with the object. And down here you have vertex colors. If you open this up you get a list and the list is empty. Because a vertex color layer is not created yet for the object. And while Houdini creates vertex color automatically as soon as you use a CD attribute, Blender does not. We have to press this little plus icon. That creates a vertex color layer for us and calls it call. And now that this layer is present, this attribute call, with the same name, will automatically bind to this layer and write its data into this layer. Now in theory it's working already, but we do not see it in the viewport, because vertex color visualization is turned off by default. So let's turn it on by going to this little menu here and switching to vertex. Now we see the vertex color information and the N turned white because the shaders are not evaluated anymore. What happens if I now select the N and move it around? Not much, and why that? Because the geometry data always is local. If I want to make it global, I have to use the location, rotation and scale data that the object info node provides. So let's create a transform node again, and let's transform this geometry data using these values. If I do this now, I can move our N around and the information updates. If you like what we are doing, please consider becoming a Patreon. 
for supporting us and for access to more in-depth courses on topics like volume techniques or PDG or Vellum and more. To everybody who is already supporting us, thank you so much. Without your continuous support, Entangma would not be possible.